If you're thinking of moving to Atlanta, Georgia, you've come to the right place. My name is Ben Dings and I am your licensed local real estate expert. Stick around because today I am taking you to a new construction community just outside of Atlanta that has some crazy unheard of buyer incentives right now. But first, before I tell you how much you can save, I'm taking you on a drive through the neighborhood and then taking you inside two amazing floor plans that this community has to offer. And as an extra bonus, in this video, I'm also going to explain the difference between using a buyer specialist like me and using either a listing agent or builder's rep. But first, I come out with new videos every single week about what it's like to eat, sleep, live, and play right here in the Atlanta metro area. So if this is your first time to my video or to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss a thing. I get phone calls and text messages every single day from people moving here and relocating here, and I absolutely love it. So if you're thinking of moving anywhere in Atlanta, Georgia, or the surrounding areas, make sure to give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. Days, nights, weekends, I've got your back when moving to the Atlanta area. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. All right, today we are in Southwest Metro Atlanta area, just outside of Atlanta, pretty close to the airport, only maybe about 20, 30 minutes away. And we are at Oxford Park by Meritage Homes. Uh, this is in the EC West Elementary School District, the Bear Creek Middle School District, and the Creekside High School District. Homes in this neighborhood are starting in the 420s. So you've got a great price point to see, and you see these homes, they're, they're pretty good size. They're three-sided brick or four-sided brick, depending on the actual uh, model or which option that you choose. Uh, but they start uh, from 2,000 square foot. They go all the way up to 3,200 square foot. Uh, they have three to five bedroom plans, and they have two and a half baths all the way up to four and a half baths. The lots, uh, you're in the Atlanta metro area in a more populated area. So we're talking lots that are 6,500 square feet. Uh, so there, you can still see that you've got yard here. So you're not completely attached. You're not completely separated. Uh, but you do, you do see also too, when you look at the sides of the homes, there's not a lot of windows. So you're kind of not in that fishbowl experience that you do get sometimes when the homes are closer together. Um, the awesome thing about this builder in this community, the homes are super energy efficient. They have spray foam insulation and their brick. So your savings is going to be huge when it comes to the summertime when you're blasting the AC in Georgia because they call it hot Atlanta for a reason. I mean, you do. It's it's not as bad as what they say. It's just humid. Uh, you know, we'll get into the 90s um, very few, maybe once or twice a year, if even will we get into triple digits. But the humidity is what gets you here. So uh, the energy efficiency really helps out then our winters are more mild but still you will get those you know the the ice apocalypse that we got what 2000 mid 2010s um but so that will help with then too on your your heating uh energy savings as well uh but these plans that it is are great little layouts here they are just finished with uh with phase one, they're about to start phase two. They're kind of right there in between trying to finish out phase one. Uh, there is an HOA in this community. Uh, it's $800, but you have a clubhouse, you have a playground, you have a swimming pool, and they also have the cluster mailboxes uh, at one part of the neighborhood as well. So you don't have your mailbox at your house, which a lot of developments that I'm seeing around here, it's starting to be like that. Um, it saves the post office a lot of uh, money by not having to go house to house. They can just go to, to one central location in a neighborhood. And also the, because of that, the counties are starting to, to, to require it. In a lot of instances, it seems like uh, to, to allow these developments to happen. Um, you can see you've got a nice driveway. A lot of folks have their nice yard. Uh, we are in the Atlanta metro area, which uh, is in the Piedmont region of Georgia. And when I say that, it's just the geography of Georgia. 
where you're starting to get into the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Granite, you coming from the West Coast, if you are coming from there, uh, mountains in Georgia are a lot different than mountains out West. Um, the mountains here are a lot older. The Appalachian Mountains, a little fun fact, used to be the tallest mountains in the world, but due to erosion, uh, they are no longer that. We don't have those, those grand peaks that you see out west with the Rockies, uh, but you are getting into the foothills in this area especially. And uh, so we, we've, you're starting to get some hill changes. Here you can see uh, it's kind of flat, but this is also where they've graded it for the homes. But when you see in the backyards, you do have a little bit of elevation changes going up and down. You see this a lot in Atlanta where, you know, the backyard might be flat, but you also might get a backyard where there's a drop off or a hill. So that's, that's one of the things about moving to this part of Atlanta or moving to the Northern part of Atlanta, especially granted we're on the South side here where I'm at in Coweta County, uh, centralized. I do all of Atlanta, but my office is in Coweta County. A lot of my business is down in that area. I do business everywhere but there was mainly farmland out there. Uh, so a lot of it's flatter than it is in this area here, but you can still see that these are great homes, uh, well-built, they're deep and wide. Um, when you're talking 2000 to 3,200 square foot homes, you're talking homes that have some size to them, some grandeur to them. So that's real nice. And when we get into these two floor plans, I, was, I really liked them a lot. Um, this brick here that you see, the brick home, this is a very popular style in Atlanta. When you get to the more rural areas, if you can see right there, that's the, uh, that's the pool house, the clubhouse, that's where that's gonna go. They're still getting it put in because it is still a young neighborhood. But in this part of town, you see a lot of this style. When you get to other parts, more rural areas, you start to see more farmhouse look. All right, so this is the first house. This is the Rockwell, it's about 2,100 square foot. It's three bedrooms and two and a half baths. Um, you'll see uh, down on the main level, they have an office, but it could be easily converted into a fourth bedroom if you wanted to when we check it out. But you've got a nice little porch area here that's covered. Uh, you've got a light that can be changed to a ceiling fan. And that's one thing that I noticed about both of these homes that I went into, they're wired for ceiling fans, but they just have a light, uh, a recessed light in there. You've got your, uh, your entryway right here. You've got a little hallway and here is the office. So the nice thing about this office, uh, like I said, you can make it a bedroom. You see the closet. The nice thing about this, off this office here is that it's tucked away from the bedrooms. Uh, a lot of times you have an office and it's right next to the spare bedrooms. Well, that wouldn't work for me uh, because of my daughter, you know, if I'm working late at night and my office is right next to her bedroom, sharing a wall, um, I'm going to be keeping her up at night. You know, my daughter's four, she goes to bed a lot earlier than me. Uh, so that could be a problem. Here's your half bath. Again, it's tucked away like last week at the house that we saw. Uh, it's not too far off from the living room but it's, it's still tucked away down a little hallway. You've got a linen closet and you've also got your coat closet right here. Uh, it could be a linen closet, it could be a storage closet. I would take out some of those racks and not necessarily use it just since there's not a tub down there. But if, if you wanted to, you could do it. And here you go into the open concept kitchen and living room. I really like this setup. It doesn't have a fireplace, but because it doesn't have a fireplace, you can put your TV a lot lower. A lot of designers, when they're building homes, a lot of architects, when they're building homes, if you notice, they make the fireplace the, the centerpiece of the living room. Also, if you watch a lot of shows like uh, Fixer Upper and stuff, notice most of those homes, about 90% of those homes, uh, don't have a TV in the living room. It's because they're not architecturally designed for that. So in a case like this, where there isn't a fireplace, the TV can sit a lot lower at eye level from when you're sitting down and you can enjoy it that way. You've got your nice island here in the kitchen. You've got gas appliances, which to some people is a big deal. I think we talked about that last week. 
Um, let me know in the comments below if you're if you're a gas person or an electric person, because I'd love to hear that. Uh, again, here they just put in the recessed can lights, but uh, you can easily put, replace them with with chandeliers over the island or a ceiling fan in the living room. They just kind of leave it open to you. You got a stainless steel uh, appliances with your your stove range and your dishwasher. It doesn't come with a refrigerator but you've got, um, you've got a nice little spot for it too with the uh, water hookup as well. Now here's an interesting pantry that they've got set up. It's actually pretty nice because I have a lot of appliances like Instapots, Crock-Pots, stuff like that that would work well in there. We'll get into that little, little cubby area soon next after here. But you've got a nice garage, uh, two car garage, I'd probably use it as maybe a one and a half car garage if I even used it as a garage at all, uh, just because we use our garage for storage and I'd probably do something similar in this case here. Uh, my wife has all her totes for all her holiday stuff. I have all my stuff in there too. So we'd probably use it for storage in my case. But here you've got your little nook that you could use as a small mud room. You could put your put your jackets there, a little cubby for your shoes, a nice little area downstairs. But all in all, the downstairs is nice, in my opinion, um, especially when you see what we've got going on upstairs uh, here in a second. But the downstairs, it's able to stay nice and clean and well kept because as soon as we come up the stairs, you'll see there's a bonus room up here as well. So you've got this area that can be used more as, in my case, I'd probably use it as a playroom slash just rec area for me and my wife and daughter. Uh, if guests came over, the downstairs could be kept a lot cleaner, especially if they came over unexpectedly. Uh, and then upstairs could be where my daughter has her toys. If a few were thrown around, it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, here we go into the master bedroom. You've got a, once again, where you can set it up with a ceiling fan, it's wired for it, uh, but they just have a candlelight in there right now. But it's a real nice setup. Right now, this is their most affordable plan. This is starting out in the 420s, but if you wanna know exactly how much it costs right now, uh, just. Give me a call and I can give you the information to my website. I can hook you up there. You can see what they have available in this community and uh, how much it's starting at too. So give me a call, find out the incentives there, but I'm gonna tell you at the end what they're running right now. But uh, give me a call or shoot me an email just to talk and to talk real estate. I love to talk real estate all the time. Uh, but here we go into the master. Again, with the private toilet room, you've got your dual vanity, dual sinks. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a real nice setup. I really, really like this home. Um, the next home that we're going to see is my favorite of the two. But this is still a great setup. Uh, but while we keep touring this home, um, I think it's a great time to, to segue into uh, the main topic, the real estate lesson topic for the week. And that is the difference between a client and a customer, which is really the difference between using a listing agent with, or a builder's rep. And that's when you're a customer versus using a buyer specialist like me, where you're a client. Uh, the main difference comes into when you're a client uh, in Georgia, I have what's called a judiciary duty uh, to my client to where I my job is to look out for you and your best interests. Uh, for a builder's rep or a listing specialist, their job is to look out for the best interests of the seller. So why does that affect you? Well, back in even in the 90s before there really was a buyer specialist in the early 90s and before you've heard the term buyer beware and that's because buyer specialists weren't really a thing uh buyers agents weren't a thing in general and agents worked for the seller and bad things happened um 
people were felt like they were had uh, because it turned into, well, I'll give an example of what happened. Uh, it's happened a few times recently because I only help, I'm a buyer specialist, so I look out for clients. Um, my client told me, hey, I want to, I love this home. I want to make an offer. Okay, great. What do you want to offer? Uh, they gave me their offer and I said, okay, that's a great offer. Um, actually, I would suggest we ask for more. Uh, both cases, when we asked for more, we uh, actually still got accepted, went under contract, no counters, nothing. Um, I'm really good at knowing how much we can get without going too far. Um, <laughs> I did it just, just like when I was a kid with mom and dad. I knew exactly how much I could get away with without getting into trouble or too much trouble. I mean, it's the same thing as being a negotiator uh, for real estate. If you ask for too much, you might insult the, the, the seller and they might not respond or they may counter with something even worse than you'd really want. So I try and get to that point to where let's ask for absolutely as much as we can without them saying no. And uh, as, a, as a customer, if you were, if it was a buyer's, if it was a builder's rep or a uh, listing agent, that they wouldn't really be playing that game. They would say, um, okay, I'll write up whatever you tell me, or they'll tell you, no, the seller won't accept it. It needs to be a full price offer. It needs to be, uh, you know, it needs to be no closing costs. You're paying all of that. No, we're not doing anything for you. My job is to get you the best deal that you can get. My job is to, to direct you to good, home inspectors when you go under contract, um, if you need help with a lender, me getting you in touch with a good lender, um, all those different aspects of it. Uh, see, here we go with the backyard that I was talking about earlier with the Piedmont backyard uh, in the Piedmont region of Georgia, where you do have a good backyard, but then it slopes away down a hill into the woods. So, but, and here we go with a four-sided brick, so super energy efficient. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about this home. We'll keep talking about the difference between a client and a customer in the next home. But I just, it's, it's something that I, my job is to take care of y'all. And that's all I do. I try to be as genuine as possible um, when it comes to this stuff. And I try to treat everyone as I would treat me, my own family. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Let's get into the next home. This one is the Brentwood home, and it is over 2,300 square feet, and it is a four bedroom, two and a half bath plan. Uh, in this one as well, it also has an office, but it doesn't have a closet in there, so really you have to get a little creative. Maybe it not, may not be the best uh, fifth bedroom, but it's still real nice. I would use the office, especially when you have four bedrooms already. Um, in some cases, you don't necessarily need the fifth bedroom. Uh, with the last one being a three bedroom, you need to stretch it out sometimes to four, I understand, but here you don't. And here's the office. Uh, the great thing about this plan, uh, you'll see when we go upstairs, that there is a bedroom above this room here, but there are two more bedrooms on the other side of the house. So maybe the bedroom that's above here, you wouldn't make into a primary bedroom that someone uses. Uh, that way, if you're doing work at night or playing games or making videos, uh, you're not disturbing the person above you. The, the last house that we were at, uh, there, there was, you know, the bedrooms, the spare bedrooms were right underneath there. So it might make things a little bit more difficult. This here is a little bit more convenient. Uh, now, one thing that you may notice about this house and the last house, they're not 100% done, so you're gonna see some patches, some stuff that needs to be done. In this case, they're still putting in the fireplace. This one does have a fireplace, has an island, uh, just like the last one. But look how grand that kitchen looks, especially compared to the last one. You've got a great living room, but see right here, you can see exactly what I'm talking about from the last house, about how much higher that TV would have to sit in this house compared to the other one. Now, I'm not complaining because it's a compromise, my wife likes the TV above the fireplace. I'd be happy with it. But if you don't like 
looking up at the TV like this, the last house is a great option too without the fireplace. Um, but just keep looking here. So let me know what you think. And also that was a switch for the fireplace. So you don't have to sit there and light it manually. You just flip a switch, fireplace turns on. Super nice. Check out the pantry in this home. Um, I also love where you have your fridge right there and a little coffee bar type setup that you'd I'd have right next to it because I need my coffee. Um, but this is a great setup here. I really like this. This one's a lot better when it comes to the uh, master or the half bath further away from everything. Remember, privacy is the main thing with the half bath. This one's tucked into the corner over by the garage, away from the dining area, away from way far away from the living room. So that's real nice. But yeah, keep enjoying the home. Um, let me know what you think. This one here starting out in the 430s. You want to know the exact price? Let me know. Check out that pantry. I told you that's a good size pantry right there. Um, I'd love that. But yeah, call me if you want to know the exact price of what this home is going for right now. Um, but yeah, let's get back into this conversation uh, while you're looking at this home. Like I said, there was a little bit of mess on the floor. Let's get back into the conversation about the customer versus the client. Because it's like I said, this is something that's I'm really passionate about. Um, I, I, I take care of my clients in... Um, you know, and that's the issue is that there's been the in, I'm sure that you know that there's a lot of news about real estate agents and realtors in the National Association of Realtors in the news. If not, um, you can Google it and I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to do my job and represent buyers and buyer specialists. There were uh, agents that were giving out misinformation. There's a lot of misinformation on the media as well right now. But um, they were saying standard this, standard that for commissions. Uh, they weren't representing their, their buyers fully. And, you know, a few bad eggs, it's just like any other industry. Sometimes a few bad eggs is what it takes. And sometimes it's necessary to create a, some uh, reform. And that's what's kind of going on right now in real estate. Um, it doesn't worry me. Um, I'm a master negotiator. That's my job. I'm I'm not fully ready to talk about and unpack everything just because I, I want to educate myself fully. And that's why we're just talking about representation right now um, because that's me as an agent. That's what matters to me is taking care of my buyers. And so that's what we're talking about. We'll, we'll talk about more other aspects of it later. Um, but right now, this, this is the root of it. Um, my job is to take care of buyers. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, when it comes to, uh, sorry, my hair is falling in my face. Hopefully, I'm getting it cut in the next few weeks. It's just been so busy um, helping people uh, get into homes. I've got now six under contract right now uh, at the moment, all at one time. So things are getting a little crazy. Uh, you might be able to see it's dark outside, uh, not really being able to film a whole lot right now, uh, but making time for you still because you are a priority, just like my clients are. Um, that's why I am filming at night because my clients are a priority. I'm taking care of them throughout the day. That's why I have a team. That way I'm not spread too thin. I can still do these things. I prioritize the important things and then I make time for the these ed educational supplemental things to help people like you looking to move uh, to help educate you because this is the largest uh, investment that you'll make until you buy another house um, and you need to be protected and that's what I'm here for before we keep going I do want to point out something that I videoed here that I haven't videoed before and that's an outlet you'll see the outlet in a second it's got a USB plug in it and a USB-C plug in it too, right there where the nightstands would go. Um, you'll see it coming up here in a second. There it is, right there. So you can put your nightstands there and charge your phones. You're not having to use the little block. Um, so that was awesome. I saw it and I was like, yep, gotta get that. But anyway, back to the client versus customer uh, issue. It caused a big issue then, and it's probably going to cause a big issue again here in the future, just because I feel like things weren't fully thought out with how 
the situation was. But like I said, a lot of agents that probably are that that are having issues right now, they may not be in the business forever, but people like me who do take care of my buyers, who take care of my clients, especially, um, well, my buyers are my clients. Um, I am not afraid. I, I take care of everyone and I have helped my brother-in-law. I've helped family. I've helped cousins, friends, everyone, and tons of people all around the area, Atlanta area. And I would not have the business that I have. I wouldn't be referred to as much as I am if I didn't treat people right, because that's what matters to me. I am in sales, but it's a different kind of sale. I'm, I'm more of a guide or a Sherpa is how I like to describe it. And I use my experience to help you. Um, yes, you may have bought a home before. This may be your first time. This may be your sixth home. Um, the market changes constantly and I'm, I, I have my boots on the ground and I know I have my, my hands, my fingers on the pulse of the real estate market at all times. So I know what's going on and I know what we can ask for and what we can ask for expectations. I can use my experience. Um, you know, homes back in the eighties, seventies, eighties, nineties, there was a lot of, I'm going to ask for $20,000, $30,000 less than asking. And there would still be some no negotiations that would happen. Well, nowadays in this market, if you did that, uh, depending on the price point, of course, you know, we, we, you know, it's, it's better to do it by percentage, but if that's, if you're talking about 90% of the sales price, the seller likely won't even respond. Um, and I know that's because I have experience with it. Um, and that's what I use my experience. Uh, I, if you sit, I use a rating system when we go look at homes, uh, one out of 10, if it's a seven or higher, it's worth putting an offer in on because there's no such thing as a perfect home. And if it's a home that you really like, if you give it a nine and a half, 9.9, .9, if you are so excited, you do give it a 10 and you sit down on the floor in the living room and you go, Ben, this is the house that I want. I will tell you exactly how to get it. Uh, if you don't like the house, if you're like, Ben, it's, it's a six, I'm going to ask the questions because you're my client. Well, what would make it a seven? Uh, would a better kitchen, would a better, uh, owner suite, would those things make it a better, would it make it a seven or an eight then? Um, I pick your brain a little bit, but it's also to help you verbalize why you don't like the home. Because when I brought my first home, uh, before I was a real estate agent, it got very tiring looking at homes and it was because I couldn't, I didn't know what I liked and didn't like about homes. It, it was going based off of feelings, which yes, look, going to a home, there's a lot of feeling, but it's also, what's that feeling? Put your finger on it. What, what is it? And, uh, and doing real estate, I can figure, I can help you figure that out. Um, I help some folks, uh, that are under contract right now. And, and the wife is a, is, um, in there, she's a therapist. Um, and, uh, she, we, we had breakthroughs just like, uh, she would in a session and it was awesome. Um, it, it was, they, they couldn't figure out why they didn't like the home. We would start to dissect things. And then we, we had our breakthrough and we figured it out and we were able to go forward instead of, you know, just spinning our tires in the mud, trying to figure out why this house didn't work, why that house didn't work. We used my method and then within uh, a week, I think we only looked at homes for one week and we went under contract. And it was the instance of literally, they sat down on the floor in the kitchen and was like, Ben, this is the house that uh, we have to have. Um, so those are the, and, and so as a client, as a, them as a client, um, as soon as they said that we were still in the house, I made the phone call to the agent. What's the situation? What's going on? They had, I had the sense of urgency. I did everything that they needed to, to make sure that they got that home. We got it under contract. We're good to go. There was another offer on the home. We beat it out. We were under contract that night. I negotiated in the house. 
had the had the contract written up, ready to go. Um, by the time I got home, it was about an hour and a half away or so, hour, hour and a half, and we got it taken care of, got them under contract, and that's what a client does versus a customer uh, who basically, I'll, I'll refer to that agent as a door opener because that's all they are. They're there to open the door for you. They don't have to tell you anything. Um, they may know, uh, you know, some guy off a of Craigslist that doesn't know how to inspect a home, but they'll they'll find this guy and say, hey, or, use this guy. He'll charge you 50 bucks to go inspect it. I've seen inspectors come out with a clipboard with a piece of computer paper. The paper isn't even lined. And he just comes out and he walks around the home. Um, we just got through that home super fast. But that doesn't help you or protect you when buying a home. You know, uh, if you have concerns that come back on the inspection, I can help you walk. I can help walk you through those concerns. Um, when it comes to financing contingency, uh, inspection, due diligence uh, period, appraisal contingency, all these things are things that go into a contract that if you're not being represented, they may not look out for your best interest, especially if they're looking out for the seller's best interest. I know during COVID, I was still a top agent in my office in the state. And I only once, and that was because it was a contractor, only one time did I ever write an offer that didn't have a, a due diligence inspection period in it. Every other offer that I and person that I got under contract did because I worked for them and I'll work for you too. And that's what it comes down to. And I know I'm on a little bit of a soapbox here um, with this whole customer versus client thing. And I really didn't get to dive into it too much, but the main thing is, and maybe this is, if you're not using me, you need to make sure that the real estate agent that you're using is putting you first. I put people first by, if I can't get there to get you in the home, I have showing partners um, and a team that can get you in the home. Um, my, my schedule, like I tell folks all the time, I work when you're off. <laughs> because if you're working, you can't see homes. Um, so most of the time, my day, yes, I'll show homes during the day. I work seven days a week. Uh, I like to turn my phone off about 10 or 11 o'clock at night and it comes on at about seven o'clock in the morning. Um, but I'll still answer if I see it come through. Um, but the main thing is, is I'm here for you. A lot of agents, that's what they're supposed to do. So you make sure that that's what they're doing for you. And if not, give me a call. Thank you so much. And let's cut to the buyer incentives. How's that sound? All right. Now that you've just got a small, small taste of what makes Creekside at Oxford Park by Meritage Homes such a great place to live, are you ready to consider making a move here? I'll be happy to get you from where you are to where you wanna be. My contact information is below and in the description, so reach out anytime. I'll be coming out with new videos every week and I will be diving in a lot deeper into these communities, so be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that like button too. And also if you're interested in seeing videos of other Metro Atlanta areas, comment below. And lastly, before I go, are you ready for those crazy huge buyer incentives that I mentioned? I didn't believe it when I heard it and I had to have them repeat it for me. Right now, this is subject to change. So, it, you know, call me if they're still running it, but are you ready for this? When you use their preferred lender, which I can hook you up with, you get up to $30,000 off the price of the home and $30,000 in closing costs. You heard me right, I'll say it again. I'll hook you up with their preferred lender and you get up to $30,000 off the list price of the home and $30,000 in closing costs. So call me and I'll see you next week.